see the, this, they could see some interview of me on YouTube. I told them, I don't remember. Yes, they were in an interview, we were talking about the technique, about this one. This was your, your podcast on, the, uh, on YouTube that was uh, seen by my patients. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Rhinoplasty Podcast with me, Dr. Cameron McIntosh. We're in season four already, and um, I have a great honor of being able to interview one of my mentors and inspirations and a man who has had an influence uh, reverberating around the world in terms of rhinoplasty, and that's Yves Saban. Yves, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Cam, it's a great pleasure for me, and the honor is also mine because having you like a good friend, sharing good time and talking about the proficiency, but also the, your history is also very interesting because you, you know, you're a great guy. So I, I, I'm here because of you as well. Yeah, thank you. So Eve, there's, this year, 2024, there are two big things I'm very excited about. In just a few weeks' time, we're going to be in Nice at the preservation meeting. Um, if any of the listeners haven't been there yet, guys, you're seriously missing out. So I have to make a pitch for that. And obviously... The other exciting thing is the World Rhinoplasty Day that we are organizing for November. It will be wonderful, wonderful. Very, very important because for, regarding this, we will talk about Nice and, your, and, and the World Rhinoplasty Day, that is a big event. So uh, regarding Nice, um, I think it's, it's a, now it becomes like a, a classic, I mean, in the, of the rhinoplasty courses all over the world. And uh, we could get so many participants from more than 40, 47 countries coming in Nice. So that's, I know you are much bigger because with your, your rhinoplasty day, you have much more. But anyway, it's pretty good already. No, it's amazing. But remember, I mean, the, the World Rhinoplasty is a 24-hour webinar. And we, we now, because we're working together, we're going to make it into a, a rhinoplasty week where we'll have live surgery and lectures and stuff. But the beautiful thing about Nice is that it's so focused on preservation. Whereas World Rhinoplasty, we're dealing with continents from around the world, we're dealing with all sorts of different people, and it's, which is great in itself. Yeah, because, because it is very complementary. I mean, we, yeah. because uh, rhinoplasty is not limited to preservation. So yeah. preservation, preservation is a small part of rhinoplasty, but that needs to be understood and done properly to, to give good results. Yeah. And, uh, but it's true that uh, the World Rhinoplasty Day is Worldwide, you're talking about all the techniques, all the procedures, new things, all things that is, that are working. So uh, it's good. I think both of them are very important uh, meetings. Yeah. And the, your, the webinar is, is great, really. To, today is amazing. I don't know how you can resist because you are spot that probably. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into any more topics, the last uh, question I had is that last year, you and the family came to have a look at Port Elizabeth and then you ended up going on a safari. So obviously the safari is the cherry on the cake for World Rhinoplasty Week. But what was that like for you? Well, when I came to you, it was really great because we could make first meet with our colleagues, second to make this uh, surgery course. That uh, was also very, I think, interesting because we could show together different cases. They were your patients, we operated them to get together. And so the completely different cases, and you could show the, the advantages of the preservation technique in primary rhinoplasties. Um, <clears throat> then we could go to the anatomy lab to, to teach the technique to our colleagues, so it was great. I think it's a very big part. And I consider in, the, in a way that it is part of my duty because I launched this kind of technique many, many years ago, and you, we have already done a podcast about that. But now people need to understand and to know, and they need to perform by themselves. Before performing in surgery, they need to go in the lab, at least to feel how it works in practice. Yeah. And now about the, the safari, safari was, for me, it was an amazing experience, amazing. It's a, not only amazing, but also, I would like to say a unique experience because we could not, impossible to see these kind of things in, in whatever other country. So we could see uh, what is for us the symbol of uh, South Africa, you know, the big five, but not only the big five, uh, for, for our colleagues who do, who do not know what is the big five, there are giraffe, <coughs> rhinoceros, elephants, uh, hippopotamus, yeah, yeah. uh, 
lions, and we have seen also so many others. It was amazing. And what was good is that they were completely, they were wild animals, but they are not fed by the, by the, uh, uh, the guards. And they are not even, they are, and the guards are protecting them against uh, people who want to, to, to take their uh, the horn or whatever. Yeah. So uh, really, so they are like, not friends because it's all it's not like that was, but we could really feel very close to them, very close to the lions, very close to the giraffe, to the buffaloes. It was amazing. And cool. the, 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 your, your, it was Shamari, but I think if we, our colleagues will go there because don't miss, don't miss this amazing safari. The, we, the meeting will be great, but Safari is, as you said, the sherry on the cake because it's really, it was really fantastic. So if I want to uh, change track a little bit, I have this kind of idea in my head that when, when kids play a game where they put dominoes and you touch the domino and it makes the dominoes fall, when, almost 10 years ago when it really started a little revolution, your domino of pushing and pushing and pushing so many years for um, preservation rhinoplasty, especially like um, high strip, it's made such a wide effect in that, you, like Valeria with the SPQR and, and Carlos and them with like the middle area of the septum. And it's amazing how all of that is spread out. Now, when I was with Barish um, and Goxel last week in Istanbul, we were discussing the structure preservation meeting which is later this year in May. And one of the things they've asked me to do is to lead like a webinar on the basics of structural and preservation rhinoplasty. So the question that I'm asking you is for the listeners, because there are a lot more people who are now interested in preservation. What would be for you the important things for the beginner kind of guys, the concepts to understand about preservation rhinoplasty? Well, this is interesting because we could have called that the reverse rhinoplasty in a way. Yeah. Because <clears throat> traditional rhinoplasty are, excuse me, <clears throat> are like removing the, 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 the dorsum. Yeah. While preservation is f try, try to fully protect the dorsum. So it's completely the opposite. If we, if we compare the, the nose to a tower, uh, the traditional rhinoplasty are cutting the tip of the tower, so you have no more tower. You have something without tip, yeah. like uh, you don't have any more roof on the on the house, and so you have to rebuild a new a new house or a new tower. In the preservation, and I think our colleagues know that, but it's better to repeat that because it is the concept is, is easy, but for when you are practicing that, it's not easy. And the concept of preservation is to cut the feet of the tower. And then the tower will be will go down down by itself. Yes. But what is saving us in this lowering of the, of the roof of the top of the of the tip of the tower is on top is that we have in the middle we have this nasal septum. The nasal septum is the key of the stability. It is really saving it for the surgeon from any uh, side effect or adverse effect coming from too much lowering of the dorsal fin. So we cannot have a sudden nose. We, if we are doing the, the, this technique properly, just by removing the feet, and then it will be, it will be very easy. Yeah. So, and, and we have to explain that. But there are all, many different techniques. We are talking about the high strip, that is really very safe. I think that for the beginners, it is probably the easiest and the safest technique. Yes. But for, uh, for the other techniques are more advanced. Yes. And then better to start with an easy one. So choosing the, the, the good patient for that is critical, not to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Because if you start and have not a good result, then we will say it's like a bullshit and it's not good. Yeah. It's not because, so we have to do this properly. And that's why the anatomy lab is also important. Because yeah. you, we, need to, we need to understand the concept and we need to do this by ourselves under the direction of a, a more experienced surgeon, but yeah. this, is, this is the key. So just to, just to, to summarize, traditional rhinoplasty, you cut the top and you have to rebuild the house. Yes. Preservation, you cut the feet, and so the house is immediately smaller, yes. lower, but you don't need to touch the, the, the roof sometimes because the roof is nice and straight, no need to touch. Why should we remove, just for making the nose smaller, why should we remove the roof? 
because we learned this technique and we don't know how to do it uh, differently. In, instead of just lowering the, the, the roof and then you have still the, the very natural roof and uh, everything is going well. So you are well, avoiding at least half of the complications of the traditional renovations during the preservation technique. Okay, two more questions around this is, in terms of revision in preservation rhinoplasty, what, what are some of the things that you've seen and how have you kind of overcome those? And what are your words of caution in terms of the people who, who are operating? Because I was also with Tio last week uh, and it was very interesting and he was saying to me that you actually told him on the phone that Tio, you must just tap harder. <laughs> do those osteotomies better. Don't come and visit me. You can do it. It was very amusing to hear him say that. Yes. The, so the question is about revision. Revision. In, in revisions. Yeah. Revisions. Uh, well, let's say that even if we have, this is, I think there are less revisions with the preservation, but let's say that the, the, the revision rate is the same that, than with the other techniques. What is really game changing is that with, at least with the high strip, but also with the low strip, uh, is that you are, you are keeping the natural anatomy. So when you are making a revision, you are facing a normal nose. And uh -huh. So you just do whatever you want because you can or repeat a high strip or you can just rasp a small hump or just improve the osteotomy by manipulating the bones. It's so it, we, with CV we did a very important work that we worked hundreds of hours on this work to compare the results according to the techniques yes. and, and the revisions and we could see that the the duration of the revisions after pre primary preservation rhinoplasty was 23 minutes. 23 minutes. When we are making a revision after primary structural rhinoplasty, it takes three to five hours. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's, a, wow. it's amazing. So revision is, let's say, even if we had the same rate of revisions, revisions are very easy because even the undermining is already done. So you just have to make the incision, the undermining is done. And then you are facing a normal nose, just so you can do whatever you want. It, it works very well. So now another thing that I've started to change my mind in is where people have said, don't do preservation before you know how to fix it with structural rhinoplasty. And I'm starting to change my mind to think, why must you first learn structural rhinoplasty and then do preservation? Surely you don't have to, I, for, I don't know, it's just for me, I'm starting to think, hmm, I don't know if I agree with that. Yes, the, the question is for most, mostly educational. Uh, how to teach the rhinoplasty to our colleagues and how to start? Because if you are already experienced in structure or Joseph technique, so you don't need to learn this anymore. So you need just to add this uh, uh, preservation to your armamentarium. But uh, on the opposite, if you are just a beginner, to which technique start, which, which technique to start? You cannot, we, can, we could start with the preservation, the high strip, from my opinion, is very easy, but you cannot operate all the patients with this technique. Yes. Because there are good patients for that and not appropriate, not appropriate patients for, for this technique. So if you want really to operate, let's say, most of your patients, so you can be, you should be able to perform, maybe it's not structure because, but you should be able to perform, let's say, traditional like Joseph technique, mm -hmm. basically, that is not that much difficult, but you are already removing the, the hump. So uh, I, I, should say, I would like to say that start with, a, 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 let's say, a, you can do Joseph technique in all cases, almost mm -hmm. all cases, even if in straight noses and light or some lines, right, we should do it, uh, preservation. But, but anyway, you can just remember, I, I want our colleagues to understand that you cannot do all the rhinoplasties with preservation. We, we, we yeah. have to choose. No, absolutely, I understand that. So, last question that I have. The, the NICE meeting is coming up now. Is that aimed mostly at guys who are quite advanced, or would somebody who is kind of at the start of their career benefit from coming and, and being able to watch live surgeries and listen to guys give talks, or is it at quite an advanced level? No, it's not an advanced technique. It's, uh, uh, thank you very much for, for this question. Yes, th this year we are making in Nice the, the new generation. Uh, uh, so to, to show to our colleagues that really we, uh, there were, this new generation started 
six, seven years ago, at the beginning when they learned that yeah. it was existing technique. And uh, most of them are very already very experienced and very happy. So they could learn directly. I mean, to answer your question, could we start? And if uh, you see a, a beginner coming to you like and who wants to learn the preservation, it's possible to yeah. start with the preservation. But we have to teach them the good way to perform the technique. And so the so then then up to them to do. I, I see many fellows and many colleagues coming to learn, even uh, last in last years or last year of. Uh, specialization in plastic, general plastic, uh, uh, or in facial plastic, and all of them know how to do that after st having a stay with me for a while. And this is the same for all my colleagues who are teaching that. So it's, I think it's not that much difficult. And but the teaching is not only teaching the technique. I mean, when you are teaching, for example, if you have fellows, I I want my fellows stay during all the when I'm visiting the patients, because they, I want them to see the, the, the select patient selection, the behavior of the surgeon regarding the patient expectations, and you see, so they see the, the, how we perform the simulation, how we explain to the patients, and then after the surgery, the, how we remove the cast, how to deal with the patient, and a little bit going a little bit further, they see also the happy and unhappy patients. And so they learn how to deal with the, the dissatisfied patient. That is also part of our exercise Absolutely. for practice. And this is critical. That's why I'm insisting on this. And generally, less than one month is not possible. So you, you need to see many patients, and you need to see also uh, the, all, what, all what I'm talking about. I mean, selection, uh, managing the patients, and so, uh, that's, uh, not only surgical technique. No, no, and I think. We live in a world that wants these instant results, but this takes a long, long time to be able to master this. You know, I mean, you've been beating this drum for generations now almost, and it's coming to fruition. So last thing, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here and ask you if you're allowed to say anything to the listeners. Apparently, there might be a new preservation book that's going to be published. Is that true or, or you don't you want to make any comment? No, no, it's true, it's true. But the good thing is, thanks to evolution, uh, not human evolution, but rhinoplasty evolution, uh, in, at least in the mind of our colleagues, now we could, we, we could meet, we could merge together the preservation, mostly the dorsal preservation, also concept about the tip, and also the, the structure, because we need to perform structure. And this is a big sense. So we are making all together the, these two groups, Preservation groups and surgery group they are very big names. I don't know if you want me to talk about who is. No, it's up to you. You can mention some of them, but I'm quite excited that there's a new book coming out. Yes, that's a, it. Will be an amazing book, and you have the, let's say you have the father of surgery. Dean is working with us, so you will have Dean Toyumi in this book. You have uh, many other already known in preservation. And you, you talked about uh, Barish, but you have also Doxia, you have Roy Daniel is still with us, Peter will, Adelizzi will make the anatomy. We have a lot of contributors, very famous and very experienced surgeons. And so we'll try to make it uh, uh, a very nice book and also educational book. Education is critical in our field. Awesome. Well, guys, there you've had it. You listened from the horse's mouth, eh? What an inspiring man, and each on behalf of the listeners around the world. Not just thank you for your time for the podcast, but thank you for how much you have given to the world of rhinoplasty. We are eternally grateful. So thank you very much. Thank you, Kamal. It was great. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Thank, thank you, so, you. Much. so, guys, come back next week for another episode of Season 4 of the Rhinoplasty Podcast. For those of you who are only listening to this on a podcast platform, please try and reach out and get onto YouTube because on our YouTube channel, we've got some really cool clips where I interview the guests.
I said that this, they could see some interview of me on YouTube. I told them, I don't remember. Yes, they were in an interview, we were talking about the technique, about this one. This was your, your podcast on, the, on YouTube that was uh, seen by my patients.